When it comes to playing indie games, my platform of choice is the Nintendo Switch because, well, I get a lot of them sent to my email box. But I do enjoy playing indie games on the Switch because a lot of these games are unique, they're fun, they're different experiences that you don't necessarily get with these huge big budget AAA games. But let's be honest, looking through the Nintendo Switch eShop can be very daunting. There are a ton of games released every week on the Nintendo Switch eShop. There are literally thousands of games available for you to check out on the Switch's eShop and it can be very hard to figure out what games are good, what games you to check out and what games you should avoid. But luckily for you, there are people like myself and Wood out in the world who play a lot of these indie games, who are always checking out these indie games to give you guys lists of what games you should be having on your radar and what games you should be checking out. Now, admittedly, it's been a little while since I've done one of these, so I've decided to include a giveaway in this video as well. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video to find out how to enter that giveaway. But what indie games have I been playing lately and what indie games are worth checking out that have just released on the Nintendo Switch? Sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel and let's talk about new Nintendo Switch eShop games that are worth playing. Hey, RGT85. Hey, Sean. Oh my God, it's Stevie Richards. The first two games I want to talk about are Onikin and Odalis. Now these two games are retro style games that NES and Master System fans will really dig. First off though, let's talk about Onikin. Onikin reminds me a lot of Strider, and honestly, that's a good thing. The action has you slashing your way through a variety of enemies and throwing bombs at them, including large boss battles. There's also some battle bike segments too that remind me of the Turbo Tunnel in Battletoads. It's a pretty hard game and there are no difficulty settings, but the game does track what levels you have cleared for subsequent playthroughs of the game if you decide to turn your game off. There's also some bonus levels in the game as well, and while it's not that long of a game, I think fans of games like Ninja Gaiden and of course Strider will have a lot of fun with this tough platformer. Odalis has you playing as a character named Haggis, which made me laugh personally because in high school I had a good friend named Hank who I called Haggis. Haggis must find and locate his son, and of course the world is scuffed with various demons that make this a bit challenging. While Odalis is an action game through and through, Odalis is a bit more like Castlevania with some ghouls and ghosts mixed in as well. Haggis has a sword that he uses throughout the levels, along with sub weapons as well. Enemies are pretty challenging, including boss battles, but once you figure out how to control Haggis, it's not too bad. Defeating enemies gives you orbs, and you can turn these orbs into health items, lives, or sub-weapons at shops that are littered throughout the levels. Odalis has branching level paths and some Metroidvania elements in it, in which you can't access certain areas of a level without getting power-ups found later in the game. Both Odalis and Onikin have an 8-bit graphical style that I think looks really good, and there's like a CRT filter that they put on the screen as well that makes it feel like an old-school classic game. Both of these games are very solid, and at $10 or less to pick them up, I think they're both very good pickups. Personally, I preferred Odalis a bit more as I am more of a Castlevania fan than a Strider fan, but both of these games are definitely worth owning if you're a Nintendo Switch owner. Observer is a first-person adventure game developed by the people that brought us Layers of Fear, and it's a pretty dark and gritty story with horror elements, which was honestly right up my alley. You play as a character named Dan Lasarsky, who is a detective known as an Observer, who can hack into different technologies in order to analyze and solve different crimes. The world is set in a cyberpunk future, and fans of Blade Runner will really enjoy the setting. I enjoyed learning about the world that I was in and why it was the way it was as well. It's not all research and crime scenes though in this game, as there are times when Dan goes into people's minds and has some very unique and crazy experiences that are unlike the main core of the game. You come across different computers where you have to solve puzzles, there's mini games to encounter as well, NPCs are littered throughout, and there's a really interesting narrative in the game that's fully voice acted. It's definitely a bit of a slow paced game, and some of the puzzles can be a bit confusing, but if you enjoy narrative driven cyberpunk games with horror elements, Observer is a solid game. Ace Combat 7 just dropped on the Xbox One and PS4, but honestly, I'm not enough of a flight fan to drop $60 on that game. So I was surprised to see a game called Sky Gambler's Afterburner that reminded me a bit of Ace Combat on the Nintendo Switch eShop for 20 bucks. The game has a story, but honestly, I wasn't interested enough to follow it along. 
basically there are bad guys who attack you and your AI team, and you gotta take them out over a variety of different locations. It's an arcade style flight game, but as someone who doesn't really mess with flight sims, I kind of enjoyed the gameplay. Controlling your aircraft is rather responsive, and you can customize and upgrade your aircraft as you progress throughout the game's story. There's also a 7 on 7 online mode as well, which allows you to battle other players in the air in some cool dogfights. Sky Gambler's Afterburner isn't a genre-defining game, and while the graphics are pretty solid, the audio can be a bit muffled at times. But if you're a casual fan of flight games, or just an Ace Combat fan who is hoping that a version of the game ends up coming to the Nintendo Switch, Sky Gambler's Afterburner will definitely fill that void you're having. On my video about Modern Combat Blackout, I caught a lot of flack because people thought I was an idiot to be enjoying this game, but you know what? I'm still enjoying it. I've been playing the game online a lot lately and even formed up a squad with some of my friends, and we are still enjoying this simplistic shooter. Sure, the story mode is garbage, but the online is pretty fun, and the various weapon upgrades you acquire throughout playing the game keep me invested. Now honestly, if Call of Duty existed on the system, no one would care about this game. And while I still don't care about the single player aspect of the game, it is still a solid online FPS game that the Nintendo Switch is definitely lacking in. Modern Combat Blackout is decent enough to play, no matter what stupid Spawn Wave has to say. Um, now, I will say some good things about this game, so it doesn't look like I'm completely destroying it, even though I don't think you should buy it. Uh, there is a lot of content in this game. What I mean by that is, there's a lot of stuff to unlock. So think of Call of Duty, but think of that even further, even more stuff to unlock. Uh, it's it's actually a good thing in, in that sense, to where you have a lot of stuff happening, you're unlocking stuff, you can play online as, you're, as we're playing online, obviously here, and you can kind of see that, that frame rate just, just, just dropping there while I'm... Tetris 99 is literally a drug, and many people are becoming addicted to it, but it's very easy to see why. It is a damn good version of Tetris with a unique twist. If you have the Nintendo Switch online service, Tetris 99 is a free download. And if Nintendo continues to do games like this for free on their service, they will erase all of the ill will that the Nintendo Switch online has brought them. Tetris 99 is Tetris, but instead of trying to clear row after row, it's a battle royale game that has you playing against 98 other people trying to win. It's fast, it's frantic, it's addictive as hell, and it plays fantastic. Trying to attack or knock out other opponents while keeping your screen clean is stressful as hell, but it's so much fun that you won't mind if you bow out early in the match. Data miners have also found more modes coming to the game in the future as well, and honestly, this is probably the best reason to have Nintendo Switch online, as I easily would have paid $10 to $15 for this gem of a puzzle game. Tetris 99 is free, it's a must download if you have Nintendo Switch online, and honestly, it might tilt the scale if you are on the fence about getting Nintendo Switch's online service. I'm technically cheating by putting Origami on this list, as it will also have a small physical release, but the game is just so enjoyable to me that I wanted it on here. Origami reminds me a lot of the classic Tenchu games, and that's a good thing. You play as a ninja spirit known as Aragami, who is summoned by a girl named Yamiko, who he must try and save. Aragami can use the shadows to teleport throughout the levels he goes across in the game. The shadows are important, as being in them allows you to charge up your meter to teleport across areas and access higher up areas, and of course avoid enemies. The game is a stealth game, so taking enemies head on isn't an option, as they have a light blade that will kill you in one hit. Taking out the enemies is very fun and satisfying though, or you can choose to avoid them altogether if you are really the king of stealth. The game looks great and runs really solid, the audio design is well done too, and the controls are very smooth once you get to the, used to the movement system that Aragami has. This version of the game contains all the DLC that the game had on previous platforms as well, so it's chock full of content. If you miss old school style stealth games like Tenchu or the original Metal Gear Solid, or you just enjoy ninjas, Aragami is a great game that I think a lot of people will overlook, but you are smarter than that because you watch RGT85. Alright, so those are some Nintendo Switch eShop games that I've been playing recently that I've really been enjoying that I think you guys will enjoy too. So let me know in the comments section down below what you think of these games, if you've played any of these games or you plan on picking up any of these games. And like I said at the start of the video, we are doing another giveaway on this channel. It's been a little while since I've done an eShop list video, so I wanted to make this video special and do a giveaway in it. We are going to give away some eShop credit. You will have three chances to win. I'm going to give away $20 in eShop credit, $50 in eShop credit, and then 
then one grand prize winner will win $100 in eShop credit. So be sure to look for the pinned comment in the comment section down below. It's very easy to enter. It's the same system that I use for all my giveaways. And as always, thank you for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Check out other videos on the channel. And as always, I will catch you guys on the next video. Later.